Circle just showed up one day as a young, young bird, and his parents disappeared uh, pretty early on, so we I think we're basically his parents. And that's not a great thing when you're, uh, uh, you've got wild birds because they imprint on you and they can't survive out in the wild and stuff, but I think we've done pretty well in getting him some friends and uh, learning how to hunt and do all the things that magpies do. It was really stressful at first because we didn't know if we could do it because he was so little at the time. Um, but he seems to have thrived and he definitely is connected to us, unfortunately. We kind of wanted him to to grow up and he'd be on his very way. We didn't anticipate that he'd love us so much. So when First Circle first came into our lives, um, I had a, a job where I could just come and go as I needed to, and he needed to eat pretty much every half an hour. Um, so a lot of my life was just keeping him alive. <laughs> so I'd, I'd run home from work at, on my 15 minute breaks or my lunch break, because I was only a block away, and I'd come, come feed him food. And it was fascinating seeing him living and thriving in a human environment. He, his speech was developing in a human way instead of a wild magpie way. So his like baby jabber was coming out as human jabber instead of magpie jabber. <laughs> hi, 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 hello, hello. Hi. Good bird, good bird. Give you kisses. Where? Right here? Right here? Right here. Good job. Go. Good job. He is a good mimic, so uh, he says a lot of words. He says hello, he says hi, he says kiss me, I'm a prince. He says, we were trying to teach him like the old Bill Matheson, and that's the weather for this evening, good evening, but he, it's a little bit too much for him, I think. You think you're a good boy? Circle's a good boy? I don't think you're a good boy at all. So we'd call him home by going, and he's learnt that call, so when he's nervous, he needs us to come home. You can hear him on the buildings going I had a jar of pickles sitting on the uh, counter there, and uh, uh, Circle was over on it, banging at it, because he pecks at everything and pushes things off. But then I heard the, the lid fall onto the ground, and I was like, what the? So he had figured out how to open the pickle jar and steal pickles out of it. Circle is a bit of a disaster because he'll, he'll, he'll destroy everything and poop on everything but he's uh, he's one of the family so you know you Put up with it. do what you got to do. <laughs> I describe him as a uh, mix of a toddler and a cat with wings. Um, cats anything on the counters will be thrown off the counters and that's very much the same with him but the difference is he has wings so he can get away from me <laughs> when I tell him no. <laughs> Everybody says on our, on our TikTok videos and stuff, we would love to have a magpie. I want a magpie. I want a magpie. And we're like, you don't want a magpie. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're good to have around. I like magpies, but uh, I don't think you want one in your house. It's, uh, it's a lot of work. <laughs> magpies uh, hide their food in, in little caches around it. And they, so they carefully do it. And they watch to make sure that other magpies aren't um, don't see where it is, and if they do see where it is, they'll, they'll take it out and they'll go hide it somewhere else. Uh, so our house has little caches of food all around it, which is very... Everywhere. <laughs> so when you brought the smoked salmon in, it just went in every, yeah, it was, every, all the clothing. for a long time. <laughs> all the couch crews. Finding every bit of smoked salmon. That... <laughs> I was cagey about telling people about him because I don't think it's legal to have a magpie as a pet, and he is not a pet, he is a wild bird yeah. who just hangs out here a lot. We but. never call him ours. Yeah. He is very much, the door is always open for him to leave when he wants. And there have been a couple of times where we thought maybe this is it, because he's made really good friends with a girl or something. A girl magpie, not a girl human. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's been a couple seasons where we're like, this might be it, This he might never come home, but he always comes home. We never intended to help the other birds in the neighborhood. They just started to see that Circle was coming inside and that he had like a, f a really good life of, what's that food? Where did you get that? Who gave you that? And so he, when he would come inside, they'd see that and then they'd decide, oh, they're safe. And so he kind of taught the entire neighborhood of birds 
that we are a safe space to be. And birds have actually come to us with stuff tied around their ankles. And when that happens, they feel safe enough with us to grab them and actually untie them. And they seem to know that we're here to help. Magpies are incredibly intelligent animals, and uh, I think that's part of what makes them such a nuisance, is that they just, they know how to take things apart. They know how to puzzle things out. They know how to get to things they want to get to, and they will do it. Everything that you've heard is terrible about magpies probably is exaggerated just because of, um, because they do pick through garbage and they uh, uh, tear things apart. Tear things apart and you know, they're, they're pests in that way, but they're pests because they're very intelligent and very inquisitive. They're, they're, they're actually not protected by the Migratory Bird Act in, in Alberta because they are a, a, a pest species. In fact, if you go to the Alberta website and you look up uh, magpies, the only thing you'll find is traps for magpie, how to build a trap to catch a magpie. Um, so when, when I have people come up to me and tell me that uh, a magpie is just a pest animal and why, why in the world would you want that to be your friend and they're such a nuisance, it's, it's sad because really they're just being themselves and what I sincerely love about them is the thing that kind of makes them a pest. Their inquisitive behavior, their spunky attitudes. So it's just, it's just getting to know them and, and who they are and, and what they do. And it, it all has meaning and it, it's all really cool. Edmonton, yes, we're resourceful, we're intelligent, we, uh, they're beautiful, they're, <laughs> they're colorful, they have, they have every color of the rainbow contained in their tail. If you're gonna pick uh, a creature to represent a spirit of a place, I think a magpie is the spirit of Edmonton. Magpies in the wild live about five years and most of the time they end up getting hit by cars or you know eating too much salt, eating too much human food and then they, then they disappear. The magpies that we see in the area they they're only usually around for about two years or whatever but this guy is now officially four years old and I've heard that magpies in captivity can live to be 20 years old. So while he is not a pet or in captivity and can go where he wants to go, he is well cared for. So I suspect we might have this guy kicking around for another 15 years or so here. And we'll be here for him. <laughs>